Hi, this is Pastor Kevin with Journey of Faith Forest Christian Church. I just wanted to take a moment and thank you for logging on today to watch our video podcast as we explore God's Word and apply it to our lives. You know, it's so important for our walks so that we spend time each day in God's Word to get to know Him and get to grow in Him. With all of my teachings, I have a sermon handout that is used during the message. It contains scriptures and fill-in-the-blank sections for you to follow along with. You may obtain this handout by logging on to our website that is listed on the screen. Go to our resources section and choose study materials. I hope and pray that God's word will speak to you today and thank you for joining the journey. Man, we haven't seen Jordan all summer. It was kind of crazy. 
<laughs> so, uh, so please pray for him. He leaves at 5.30 in the morning, Saturday morning. And thanks to all the, 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 the lines now, because you're going to be at LAX like at 3 in the morning. So please pray for me, because I'm the one driving. Uh, I was going to have Janine drive him, but apparently she's going to be at youth camp, so I can't use that as you. So, uh, so but please pray for him. And we have one last announcement. And if I could ask Jeff and Doris to come up. There we go. Okay. Ah, good morning, good morning. I have arrived. <laughs> I, I have a very important message from my country, Mr. Locke. He's a big man. He's not great. So, I'm filling in for him. We are starting Christmas in July. What is Christmas in July? I'm glad you asked. It's Operation Christmas Child. Now, my wife and I will be back at the table. You're welcome to take boxes, bring them back, and bring them back again. I hope you got a bulletin board insert. Put it on your refrigerator to remind you that it's very important that we bring the shoe box. Because shoe boxes are gospel opportunities for children around the world. They go to 150 countries. Now, back there at the table, I'd like you to take a look. Because it tells you where their shoe boxes went last year. They went to seven different countries. One country was the Arizona, Nevada, USA. There are other countries involved. Like I said, 150. So come back and visit. Come back and talk to us. Because me and Mr. C, I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Kevin. <laughs> That's the And if you have your Bibles, if you want to open up to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and if you don't have a Bible, please raise your hand and we will get you a Bible. And if you don't own a Bible, please accept it as a gift from us to you. Now, the title of today's message is The Excellence of Love. And I remember when, uh, when I was first going into ministry, I went back to my old church and I, um, I gave a message. And at the end, what they do there is the, the pastor, after the message, they walk down the, the middle, middle aisle and you wait at the the, the door and you shake everybody's hand uh, leaving. And I remember everybody was saying, boy, they really needed to hear this message. Thank you so much. They really needed to hear this. I was getting so excited because I couldn't wait to meet they. Because whoever they was, they really needed to, need to hear this. And I was just so excited that I was going to be able to talk to them and see if they liked the message. Well, unfortunately, I never got to meet them because they never walked up. And, this is one of those messages today that, as you listen to it, I don't want you to think, boy, I wish so-and-so was here to hear that message. I want you to take it personally. And I want you to ask yourselves, how does it apply to me? Not, how does it apply to someone else? You see, today I'm preaching about the excellence of love and how to care about others. And I'm convinced that it's a message that we all need to hear. Now, hear my heart. I'm not saying that because I think you're bad people. I think you're all great people, to be honest with you. But I think it's a message, and I think it's a topic in the Bible that we just can't talk enough about. Now, I remember in my early part of my, my Christian walk, and even after I, I got serious with Jesus, and I started praying for all the, you know, the gifts and the fruit, you know, and, and things. And I, and I have to confess that as I prayed for those gifts, I was praying for them for selfish and personal reasons. Yes, I may have been praying for tongues or prophecy, but it wasn't so that other would be, others would be blessed by it. But I was praying for it so that other people would look at me and go, wow, that guy's really anointed. Yes, I may have been praying for those gifts, but I wasn't praying and asking for the right reason. You see, I wanted them, but I wanted them for myself. And as we've been studying the Holy Spirit this year, and as we've been talking about the fruit, and as we're going to be talking about the gifts, you know, I think we all have to realize that God has given us all many skills and talents. For some of us out here today, you know what those skills and talents are. And for others, you are still praying and waiting on the Lord to reveal what those are. And for some of those skills and those talents, we refer to them as gifts. And other skills and talents are referred to as fruit in the Bible. 
In Galatians 5, 22, 23, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Now, you might not think that those fruits are gifts, but I can tell you sometimes those fruits are harder and more difficult than any gift you could ever ask for. I can tell you raging autumn <coughs> Because the last, this last week, trying to get on the 57 at Via Verde has been an absolute nightmare. And as I was trying to get on today, I had to remind myself that the topic of today's message is love. And that we're talking about the fruit of the Spirit. And some of those fruits are kindness and self-control and patience. Because the Yahoos, they were so interested and concerned about getting in the raging waters, has literally blocked all the lanes of the road and you couldn't get on to the freeway. You see, sometimes those fruits are more like gifts than we want to think of them. And when it comes to the Holy Spirit, we're so focused on the gifts. And in the Bible, there are mentioned over 20 gifts. And we talk about the fruits, and there are nine fruits listed in Galatians. But in John 15, 16, it says, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you, that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. Now that's kind of a dangerous sentence and that's kind of a dangerous statement because what is it that we really would ask for and want? I remember when I was younger, I used to think, you know, I used to watch I Dream a Genie and I'm like, man, I wish I had my own genie because I was, man, I, there's so many things I'd wish for and I'd want and this and that. And even when I was in uh, the business world and I was traveling all the time and sometimes you get stuck in airports because of the lazy and you get stuck on airplanes, I used to think, man, I wish, I, I didn't want genie at that point, I just wished I was genie. I wish I was genie, I could just blink my eyes and I'd be wherever I want. But that's a dangerous question and a dangerous statement when the Bible says that whatever you ask for, what is it if you could only have one thing? What is it that you would want? More importantly, if we could only have one thing, what is it that the Lord would wish us to have? In other words, what is it that is most important to the Lord? Well, there's an old hymn by the title that says, They'll know we are Christians by our love. And it says, We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. And we pray that our unity will one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yeah, they'll know we are Christians by our love. And because I love all of you, I did not sin. I think it's safe to say in the Bible and some of the hymns we sing, that love is important to the Lord and love is important to the Holy Spirit. In fact, Paul wrote in Romans 5, 5, the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. And today we're going to study how we are to use the excellence of love to give the world what it needs the most. And that is love. Now normally at this point I have you stand up and I have you read the scripture with me. We're not going to do that today. We're actually going to stand up a little bit later. I kind of gave it away that we're actually going to stand up and we're going to read an old, we're going to sing an old children's hymn. But as we look through 1 Corinthians 13, it's called the love chapter. It's, I can tell you from wedding ceremonies, it's used in probably 90% of most wedding ceremonies. It describes, at wedding ceremonies, it describes the love between two people. But I think it has a much broader context and a much deeper meaning. And I think it really describes the love that we should have between all people. <coughs> Jonathan Swift, the author of Gulliver's, Gulliver's Travel, said, We have just enough religion to make us hate, but not enough to make us love one another. And I think, unfortunately, that as so many people emphasize the Holy Spirit, that it hasn't been holy. Because as they talk about the Holy Spirit, they ignore Scripture. And it hasn't been spiritual because it has appealed to the human nature inside of us. I don't think we should tell others what gifts they should have or how to obtain them because only the Holy Spirit gives those how and when He determines. And I don't think we should minimize the gifts either, but I don't think we should neglect the fruit of the Spirit. And Paul wrote in verse 13, Now abide in faith, hope, and love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. 
You see, church, love is the greatest gift. Paul wrote a little bit earlier in 1 Corinthians 12, 31. So the last verse before we get into the love chapter, he says, But earnestly desire the best gifts, and yet I show you a more excellent way. Well, what is that excellent way that Paul is talking about? I think Paul is talking about the excellent way is the excellence of love. The more excellent way is a way to serve the Lord, to please the Lord, and to honor Him. And Paul begins the scripture in verse 1. He says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clinging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Paul's reminding us that the practice and the presence of the gifts are useless unless we have love. And I think it's interesting that as you compare Galatians 5, 22, verses 23, which are the gifts, excuse me, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, to verses 4 through 7 in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, what Paul is describing in verses 4 through 7 are exactly the fruit of the Spirit. He tells us that love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up. Love does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Now, as you read that scripture, and as you go back to Galatians 5.22, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Paul is perfectly described in verses 4 through 7, the fruit of the Spirit that he talks about in Galatians 5. He tells us that love is patient with people and tries to understand them and react accordingly. He says that love is kind and that it always thinks of a gentle and constructive way of dealing with people in difficult situations. And he reminds us that is why love is the greatest gift. But not only is, is it the greatest gift, I believe is the most precious fruit, but we have to remember that it is not something that we can create on our own. Only the Holy Spirit can let us feel the Lord's love in our lives. And only the Holy Spirit can allow us to share that same love with others. But the Lord does ask us that we would be a willing vessel by which His love may flow through us to reach those other people. Church, we need the Holy Spirit to understand the Lord's love for us and to understand the Lord's love and show it to other people. Colossians 1.8 says, Who also declared to us your love in the Spirit? Love never fails. Love never comes to an end. Love is preeminent. It means it surpasses all others. It's perfect. And it's permanent. Love will endure forever. For as we read in 1 John 4, 8, God is love. I believe one of the main evidences of a Christian that is maturing in their walk is seeing that love grow inside of them. That love for God, that love for God's people, and their love for lost souls. And while we may selfishly want those fruits and our gifts for ourselves, we have to understand that God never intended for us to keep His love to ourselves. John wrote in 1 John 4, 7, 3, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not love God, does not know God. For God is love. Church, we cannot make up this love on our own. Only the Holy Spirit can give it to us. Only the Holy Spirit can give us a love for someone that we didn't think we would ever be able to love. Or that we didn't think we would ever be able to love again. Only the Holy Spirit can create a new love amongst friends and family where there once was only bitterness and hatred. 
But we have to understand that before we can give this love to other people, we must first receive it. You see, we can only, look, only give God's love if we have first received God's love. And as you sit here today, my question to all of you is, have you received God's love in your life? John reminds us in 1 John 4, 7, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows Him. And I believe that that is exactly what the Holy Spirit wants to recreate in each and every one of us. As Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, I also send you. Receive the Holy Spirit. We are today and every day to receive the Holy Spirit. And we are to receive the Lord's love. It is only the Holy Spirit that teaches us to love others by pouring the Lord's love into our hearts. Now, if you have your Bibles, I want you to move over to Romans chapter 5, verse 5 for just a second. And if you highlight or underline, I want you to highlight in your Bible. And because, thanks to Mitch Fox, we had that art class, if you do artwork, I actually encourage you to write, draw a little heart around this verse. But in Romans 5, 5, it says, The love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Now, if you write or if you underline, I want you to write in your Bible, right next to that verse, God loves me. And as Pastor Ruben even told the kids that during those times of difficulty and trial, we are to say to ourselves, Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me, church. I believe that every day we must remind ourselves and say that. God loves me. Because I know we live in a world today that tries to tell us otherwise. That tries to convince us that God doesn't love us. And I think sometimes as hard as we try, as diligent as we are, sometimes we fall into the trap of believing what the world says. So I want you to write in Romans 5.5, 5, God loves me. And if you ever begin to hear that voice in your mind, if you ever begin to doubt if God loves you, I want you to work, uh, open up to Romans 5.5 5 and remember, church, above all things, above all else, God does love you. In fact, the greatest gift that God has ever given us is His love. In John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But not only is love the greatest gift that God has given us, but love is also the greatest gift that we can give to others. A little bit further in John chapter 13, verse 35, it says, by this all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Now remember last week when we were talking about we are to bear more fruit, Jesus said to us, they will know you are my disciples if you bear more fruit. And here in John 13, 35, Jesus gets a little bit more specific and clear for us, and he says, they will know that you are my disciples if you bear more fruit. I think that the fruit, the most important fruit that the Lord wants us to bear is the fruit of love. A couple of years ago, there was a story of that this church was doing an enactment of, of you know, the passion of Christ. And so they, uh, the Jesus, the guy playing Jesus, was carrying his cross uh, you know, over his shoulder and he was walking down the street to, to be hung. And there was a heckler in the crowd that was heckling them and saying stuff to him. And this guy who was the actor got so fed up with them that he just put his cross down and he walked over to the guy and he popped him right in the nose. Now after, as you can imagine, after the play, the, the, the pastor had to say to the guy, you know, I, I really enjoy your acting, but I'm going to have to fire you because Jesus just can't hit people in the middle of the play. And he said, you know, please, 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 I promise I won't do it again. Please give me another chance. He got the best of me, but I promise it will never happen again. Well, the pastor thought about it, and, and because he was a kind and gracious man, he said, okay, I'm going to give you one more chance. So the next day, the, there's Jesus carrying his cross, and sure enough, there's the heckler again who's heckling him and saying stuff to him, and, and Jesus, well, not Jesus, but the actor's getting really frustrated, and he's, he's grinding the, you know, his fingernails into the cross, and he wants so badly to go over and prop him again, and, and all he could do is he looked at the guy, and he said, I'll meet you after the resurrection. You know, they're not, isn't that kind of what Jesus says to everybody else? Like, I love you now, but I'll see you after the resurrection. You see, even as Christians, even if we're playing Jesus in a play, it is hard sometimes to bear our cross when people make us cross. Church, that's why we need the Holy Spirit. To be able to give us that love 
when we don't have it in ourselves. To be able to show people that love when quite honestly we don't want to share it to them. I think sometimes the most effective opportunities we have as Christians is to show love to people that have hurt us and have burned us and said things bad about us and, and caused difficulties and trials and problems in our lives. Because the world expects us to re retaliate. You know, it's the do unto others before they do unto you mentality. See, I will be nice to you as long as you are nice to me. And the moment you burn me is the moment I turn my back on you. That's what the world wants us to think. And that's how the world wants us to react. Jesus says, love others as I have loved you. Now we think, oh, but Jesus, you don't know my situation. Church, we have all, can we be real for a minute? We have all done enough in our lives to give Jesus a million reasons why not to love us. Yet he still loves us. Anymore. Jesus commands us to love others as he has loved us. The greatest, I believe, the greatest opportunity we have is to show people that love, especially when they don't disagree. <coughs> John 13, 34 says, A new commandment I give you, that you love one another, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. When we show people the love of Jesus Christ, when they, when they don't deserve it, let's be real, there are some people that don't deserve it, but when we show them the love of Jesus Christ, that we, uh, the church, we validate and make Jesus Christ validate. It's that point when they begin to understand and realize that He is real. When we slip and we fall, we begin to act like this world. We validate their beliefs. But when we love them as Christ first loved us, we validate Jesus Christ. And I really believe, church, that as you look around the world today, one of the biggest problems we have is that people do not know that Jesus loves them. And so Pastor Ruby, can I ask you to come up for a minute and play guitar for me? It's going to be a pretty familiar song, I promise you. I figured today, because it's 4th of July, and I don't know why, but because it's 4th of July, rather than stand up and read a scripture, we're going to stand up and we're going to sing a song. It's the old song that we have known a million times. And I have to say, the reason why I thought of this song, last week we were at the uh, at, at the Greek Come Lesson Home with the youth group. And there were some kids. There was a woman in there that was like 92, I believe. And so we broke up in little, uh, you know, we were singing songs to them. And, you know, they, they liked the hymns. And, you know, we, we tapped out the hymns we know. And, and I remember Delia saying, sing, yes, Jesus loves me. Oh, yes. And, and it was so cool. At some point, there was a woman in there who was 102 years old. And so the, the kids, you know, the, the, the youth broke up in little groups and they began to read to the scripture to these people. And the 92-year-old was so cool. At one point, she stopped the kids and she started quoting scripture to our kids. And she started teaching the kids and started talking to the kids. And at one point, she finally says, well, that's about all I know. But isn't that powerful, church? That is the love of Jesus Christ. And I can tell you some of the people in that room didn't understand what they were saying. Maybe it was a language barrier, maybe it was some other, other but I promise you, you felt the love of Jesus Christ. So I want to ask you all, please stand up. And we are going to sing like Packers fans right now. And, and we are going to sing Jesus loves me. I have the, the words on your hand, now I have the words up here. And, and Pastor Roman, if you wouldn't mind leading it, because I really, I do want to know Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me, yes I know. Yes, Jesus loves me. The
Yes, Jesus loves you because the Bible tells you so, church. And if you believe that the Bible is the truth, then you have to know that Jesus loves you. And I believe that that's the message that the world needs to hear so desperately. There are people all around you that are carrying their burdens. In church today, do you care and love them enough to help them with their burdens? If you love Jesus like Jesus loves you, then you'll be willing to pray with them, to spend time with them, and tell them about Jesus' love. See, see what, what you say, you, you help people with their burdens, and you're like, well, I can't, I can't pay anything. I don't know. Church, when we bear other people's burdens, we're not solving problems for them. We're standing with them. Sometimes the only thing people want when we're bearing burdens is just for someone to listen to us, to pray with us, to laugh with us, and to cry with us. Church, are we bearing other people's burdens just as Jesus bared our burdens? Or do we not have enough time in our busy schedules to do that? I believe that when we bear other people's burdens, we are showing them the love of Jesus Christ. I remember, I think I told this story before, I remember when I was in Thailand, we got in a taxi with the taxi cab driver, and in Thailand, it is a very predominant Buddhist country. And the taxi cab driver was Buddhist, and we began to talk to him about Buddhism. And how do you get to heaven? He says, well, you have to do da 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 He said, how are you doing on that? Well, not so good. Well, there are any other ways you can get to heaven. And you know what the sad part is? If you really understand Buddhism, there is really no way that you can get to heaven. They, the way they tell you their religion, there is really no way to get to heaven. So you are beginning, you are entering into a religion where you know you are basically doomed from the beginning. So my point is, what's the point? So we began to talk to him about Jesus Christ, and we began to tell him about Jesus' love for him. We began to tell him that Jesus died on the cross for his sins so that he could one day go to heaven. And this man, as we were driving down the street, broke down and started crying and said, you mean someone loves me enough that they would do that for me? Church, I believe that that is the message that this world needs to hear because I believe that that is the one message that this world doesn't want people to know about. I believe the world doesn't want people to know that Jesus loves them, that their sins can be forgiven, that they can have hope and a promise and a future. I believe this world is oppressing us and depressing us and trying to hold us down. We must tell the story of Jesus' love for each other. Ephesians 4 2 says, With all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love. I think love is all the other fruit wrapped into one. Wrapped into, wrapped into one, if I can say it. But remember, we can only give God's love if we first received God's love. And in this chapter, Paul names five spiritual gifts, tongues, prophecy, knowledge, faith, and giving. But he pointed out, but have not love, I am nothing. Without love, tongues is nothing but noise. Without love, ministry cheapens and doesn't touch the people as they should. But ministry with love enriches the church. Love enriches all the gifts and it brings value to them. So while we sit and as we pray each day about what gifts and what fruit we want, I encourage you above all, pursue love. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 14.1, Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. I personally don't think we need more knowledge in this world, more technology. I think what we really need is love. Because I don't believe that the minds of people will be changed until their hearts have first been changed. Cal Thomas, a journalist, wrote, Love talked about is easily ignored, but love demonstrated is irresistible. Paul reminds us, we believe all the right things, but do not have love, then you are nothing. I was reading of a story of, of some construction workers that were building a high-rise in the city, and they were working on the third floor, and this building happened to be across the street from a hospital. And one day as they were working, they saw a little girl in the hospital, a patient, with a sign. And she said, hi, my name is Lisa. What's your name? 
And so the construction workers were kind of taken back by it, but they thought it was kind of cute. So the next day they brought in some poster board and some, some pens and they wrote, Hi, my name is Bill, my name is Tom, my name is, is Steve. How old are you? So this little girl wrote back, I'm seven, how old are you? And so for, for several days, and I probably didn't answer, but for several days, this went back and forth, or one day she would have a message, and the next day they would respond with a message, except for one day they noticed that she was not at the window. And so they got concerned, and they called the hospital, and they asked for the nurse at the third floor. And they explained what had been happening, and they said, the nurse said, I'm sorry, unfortunately she's taken a turn for the worse, and she's in intensive care. So these big, burly construction workers that worked on high-rises that day pulled their money together and they bought her a car and they bought her flowers and they walked over the hospital. And then unfortunately they couldn't go in this year, but they gave it at the nurses' stations at the intensive care unit. And so for the next couple of days they prayed for their dear little friend that she would be healed and that she would be restored. And a couple of days later there was another sign that appeared in the window. And the sign said, Lisa passed away. Thank you for caring. Church, I think you can say I love you when the waters are come with us, don't you? But I think the most powerful way that we can say it is not by what we say, but by what we do. And I think we all have Lisa's in our life right now. So desperately want to know the love of Jesus Christ. And you're just looking for someone. Do you realize that you are walking with Jesus today and that you are in this church because someone prayed you here? That someone prayed you into a relationship with Jesus Christ? As you look at all of your family and friends around you, your co-workers, your classmates, don't you think that they deserve that as well? Paul wrote in Corinthians 8.1, Knowledge puff up, puffs up, but love edifies. As you look at your love today, the love you have for others, the love you have for your family, the love you have for your friends, let me ask you this. Is how you are loving them puffing yourself up? Or is how you are loving them building God's church? Paul wrote in the love chapter, verse 4, Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Love is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek it own, its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things. Believes all things. Hopes all things. Endures all things. Love never fails. If God loves you, then you can love. If God loved you even when you were in your deepest, darkest pit, then you can love others when they are as well. First Thessalonians 4 9 says, For you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. Now, I don't think it's just because of technology, but I believe that our world has become very impersonal. Teenagers no longer talk to each other. They text and they, whatever, Snapchat, Instagram, or whatever they do. They tweet and all that stuff. And, and we can make fun of the teenagers, but we do it as well, amen? It is so much easier to text someone than to actually have to talk to someone. It is so much easier to write an email as opposed to call someone. We, by virtue of who we are and what we are doing, are becoming an impersonal society. And as Christians, it is so easy to fall into that trap as well. But what did Jesus do? Jesus stepped down from heaven and came to this earth. And no matter where Jesus was or what he was doing or where he was going, he always made time to stop and talk to people. He always made time to pray with people and heal people. He always made time to sit and eat with people. Church, are we making that same time for people as well? Or have we become so busy and impersonal that we allow ourselves to walk by pretend like they don't even exist. John 15, 12 says, This is my commandment, that you love one another, as I have loved you. You can be if you want to come on up here. I believe the greatest example that we can set for others in 
greatest way that we can show God's love to others is by how we act. Is it easy? Absolutely not. Do we always want to do it? No. It's not easy to forgive. It's not easy to forgive. And that's why we need because if we truly want to receive God's love, if we want to share God's love with others, then we have to understand that we cannot do it on our own, but only through the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's why love is called a fruit. Because it tastes far better than anything else we could ever imagine. It is that perfect piece of watermelon on a hot day, the sweetest grape you've ever tasted, It's the fruit that people remember the most. It's that fruit that people will want the most. Is there a better way to solve all the world's problems? I absolutely believe so. In fact, I believe there's a more excellent one. That is the way of Jesus Christ. And that is the excellence, excellence of His love. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. And it's easy to say that, but let me put it in more personal terms for you. What the world needs now is love, joy. What the broken and the lost need now is God's love, showing. As we go off and as we celebrate Fourth of July tomorrow, church, may we never forget that every day we get a unique and distinct opportunity and pleasure to celebrate freedom that we have in Jesus Christ. Freedom from our sins, freedom from our trials, freedom from our burdens, freedom from an eternity of death that we now get to spend with Him and Him. Every day for Christians is Fourth of July. And I believe every day we should take time to remember that. And celebrate. And as we get ready to receive communion right now, you know, I was listening to one of Jean's favorite um, worship leaders is a gentleman by the name of Jason Upton. And I love, I love when she puts this guy out. She goes to YouTube and puts him out. Imagine, woo! I mean, as soon as she starts, she just starts bawling. I, I love it. It's so funny to watch Thank you. And, but, um, and he was talking about it. He, he actually wrote, he was talking about communion. And he was saying, you know, we often forget that when we come up for re communion, we are receiving something. We are receiving something from our Jesus Christ from our Lord. Church, do you understand that that bread and that juice represents something that you receive from Jesus Christ? And what we receive is His name. Do you understand that? Do you appreciate that? Do you, mean, do you know what that, that means to you? For some of you right now, you might not feel like anybody loves you this way. For some right now, you may think you have more enemies than you have loved ones. For some right now, you may feel like you don't have a friend in the world that you can talk to. But yet we can, on a daily basis, receive the love of Jesus Christ into our lives. And as you come up right now and as you receive this communion, I want you to understand that what you are receiving, receiving is something very valuable and precious. You are receiving the gift of love, the greatest gift, the only gift that can bring us salvation, the only gift that gives us the promise of eternity. So as you sit there right now, there's I want you to spend time with Jesus. You know, this isn't a this isn't a race to, you know, I want to be the first one up there. When I was little, I always wanted to be the first one up for communion. I don't know why I never got it. But, um, but this isn't a race. I want you to spend time with Jesus Christ. Do you know, church, do you know in your heart that Jesus is you? Maybe you do, and maybe right now the Holy Spirit is convicting you because maybe we haven't been loving others as we should. As you spend right now, I want you to spend time with but Jesus, I want the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Right now, maybe, maybe right now, those names will pop up in your mind. The people 
that need the love of Jesus Christ. Just like that taxi cab driver. Maybe, maybe right now there are people in your lives that you don't even know that are crying out and saying, God, if you're real, I want you to show yourself. Maybe right now he's getting ready to use you in a mighty and powerful way by showing someone the love of Jesus Christ. Praying that those names and those people will be able to. Think about how special this gift is that he has given us. His love. His love that took him to the cross. His love that gave him the, the ability to forgive us for all of our sins. His love that surpasses all things, that never goes away, that never changes. Maybe right now there's sin in your life that, that you know is there. Right now is the time to give right away. Because church, we cannot receive His gift unless we're prepared and ready to receive. So right now, prepare your hearts. Receive this amazing gift. Be changed and transformed for the rest of your life. And as you walk out of here today, don't keep it with you. Share it with everybody else. I promise if this was Christmas and I gave you all candy canes and said I want you to hand these to the next 10 people you see, we would have no problem finding 10 people to give candy canes to. Well, we have something better than candy canes. We have the love of Jesus Christ. And I want you to go out and I want you to share that with everybody you see today. If you go to a 4th of July parade tomorrow, I want you to give that gift to Jesus, of Jesus Christ to people. If you go to a fireworks show tomorrow night, I want you to give that gift of Jesus' love to people. This is not a gift for you to keep. This is a gift for you to share. So that they too can receive the fruit of the Holy Spirit. That song that Kevin, Pastor Kevin said, we are one in the Spirit, that old hymn, I was there when it was written. I'm a new sinner. It's an awesome song that we did in the Jesus movement. Back when we brought countless people to Christ because they moved and experienced the love of God for the first time. So many young people. I'd like to sing that and then we'll move on to the worship. But here's the way that song went. We are one. In the Spirit, we are one. In the Lord, we are one. In the Spirit, we are one. In the Lord, and we pray that our unity would one day be restored and they'll know we are Christians by our love. I am love, yes, and I know we are Christians, I am love. All praise to the Father, from the Lord, blessings for all.
you've enjoyed today's podcast. Journey of Faith is a four-square Christian church located in Glendora, California. For more information on Journey of Faith, visit us on the internet at www.thejourneyoffaith.net. That's www.thejourneyoffaith.net. You may also call us at 626 914 And finally, we hope you will come visit us. Our Sunday morning service is at 10 a.m. We offer ministries for all ages, from newborns through high school during our service. May God bless you. Thank you for joining the journey.